Welcome in to AWA Unleashed. We are the number one self-proclaimed preeminent podcast dedicated to telling the stories and reliving the memories of the American Wrestling Association. As you can tell, if you are watching, uh, my name is Chris Tubbs. You can see on the screen uh, at CM Tubbs. That is my Twitter handle for those that use Twitter as one of their social media platforms. Feel free to, uh, to follow me on that. Feel free to follow us as well at AWA Unleashed. But enough about me. Let's bring in the uh, the two other fellas, the uh, gentlemen, as uh, I like to call them. Mick Karch, Polish Joe. And uh, guys, this is going to be a fun show because people are going to be able to judge us the same way that you guys judged everybody last week. So uh, here we go. Hi. Hi. Let's do it, and uh, if the if the critiques are positive, we'll have them. If they're yep. negative, suddenly our audio went out, and the email went out, and everything else. So, so here, here's sort of my take on it. I have long said the easiest job in the world is to be a critic mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. you can't be wrong. It's your opinion. That's so, right. Yes. Like we did last week, everybody that submitted their matches. They were great for the most part. Some, you know, we each had our own little variances on what we thought of them, and that's absolutely fine. And yep. so bring on the critiques on this end. Doesn't matter to me. It's yep. we're having fun being bookers. That's yeah. right. That's that's yeah, exactly it. Wahoo and I'll be Ray. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There we go. Mick is a Wahoo, let me say. Oh, he's a Yahoo. He's a Yahoo. <laughs> Yahoo! Okay, so be- before we get to that, we do have some business to uh, to take care of. As you can tell in the uh, corner of the screen, thank you to Soda Stick for everything that you've done for us and for uh, providing the $50 gift certificates to our winners last week. If you have not gotten in contact with Mick Karch, get Mick your information, and uh, we will make sure that we pass that along to the uh, the fine folks at Soda Stick as well. And if you want some AWA Unleashed swag, that's the best place to get it. As well as 7th Avenue Pizza, best frozen pizza on the market. Doesn't even taste frozen. They've got a brand new breakfast pizza. Uh, it is uh, what the kids would say, the cat's meow. Um, it is uh, the bomb.com. It is 100. Uh, it is all of that wrapped into, it is all of that in a bag of chips. So, uh, and you can have chips with your pizza, but it is uh it's really, really good stuff. He oh, left oh, time oh, 60 minutes. 60 oh, minutes. I, 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 I got to – the kids are saying cat's meow. I don't yeah. – I mean, it was before Karch's time. What time is it? <laughs> oh, <it's, laughs> I, I don't know if you're – you, see, you and I, Joe, we run in different circles, okay? I'm hip with the kids, which isn't bad. I mean – you might be hip with I don't I don't know what the scene is like in your neck of the woods, but around where we live, yo, diggity dog, that's how we roll, yo. Well, and I just run in circles. That's <laughs> chasing the tail. <laughs> <laughs> God. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, also, as well, um, follow us on all your social media platform where, wherever you get us: uh, Google, Spotify, YouTube. Um, iTunes, where, I mean, wherever. You can get us pretty much anywhere. Uh, just search AWA Unleashed. And please uh, subscribe to our podcast on the YouTube channel. That's probably the best way uh, to help us grow. So uh, that being said, guys, a um, couple of other things that I want to get to. Uh, Mick, why don't you go ahead and, and go first? Because I kind of I got to gather my thoughts here. Well, we, we lost a couple of uh, wrestlers. Uh, in the past week or so, uh, generationally different, but uh, in their own way, very important to the business. Uh, I'm going to start with a guy kind of from my era, and that is Johnny Powers. And uh, I have mentioned Johnny on this program before as the only man to defeat the Crusher in a Twin Cities cage match. He did that back in 1967. Uh, Johnny from Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, was a a legendary figure up in the uh, northeastern part of the United States and into Canada as a wrestler, promoter, booker. Uh, He did it all. And uh, sad to say, uh, another wrestling legend is gone. Uh, Rest in peace, Johnny Powers. 
Yeah, and I'm going to go with uh, a friend of mine, Jason Strife. Uh, I, I knew Jason when I started working with Nick Dinsmore in Midwest All Pro um, back in um, back in 2000 and what was it, 14 or so. And it was really one of those. If it wasn't for Jason Strife and the help that the guys in Magnum um, gave us to, to help this thing get off the ground, it would not have it would not have happened. And I had a chance to get to know Jason, um, the performer, and uh, Nathan, the individual, and he was always just such a class guy. And I, I, he just he had so much influence. We talk about guys that have influence in the Upper Midwest. Jason Strife had so much, uh, he just, he, he had his hands in a lot of things in the upper Midwest, worked uh, a lot of uh, AEW shows. Um, I know that uh, on Rampage a couple weeks ago, uh, Michael Bennett uh, from uh, Kingdom Ring of Honor fame uh, had his a Team Strife uh, taped on his wrist. So um, I'm going to get a picture up here as well, guys. But this this one... This one hurt. This one hurt me uh, personally, and I will never. Um, it's it's it sucks. It absolutely sucks. As I'm looking for a picture, but uh, yeah, I'm gonna miss you, Jason. Gonna miss you. Uh, I'm gonna miss Nathan, uh, the person, uh, most of all. So uh, rest in peace, Jason Strife. A reminder that tomorrow is not guaranteed to any of us. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Yeah, he's been uh, he'd been battling some. Oh, I got I had the picture up here as well, and I just I can't I can't find it. I'll uh, I'll, I'll get it uh, a little bit later. Um, okay, guys, I I know it's kind of a somber way to to make, but I just I I feel like we had to get those out of the way. Um, let's get into our our dream cards because this is you know we asked people to submit their dream cards, and now. It's time for us to uh, to tell you ours. So why don't uh, why don't we start? I'll start because um, really, let's go with me, Joe, and then Mick. So okay. I'm going to tell you mine, and then you guys can just give me your feedback, and we'll go. Uh, we'll just go that way. Sound good? We're going to go match by match, correct? We'll go, yeah, we'll go. We'll go match by match. So okay, excellent. Um, okay, Let's first. Start. Okay, first of all, my 60 minute Iron Man match. I had two guys that I felt really had the cardio and two guys that could go Billy Robinson versus Kurt Hennig. Uh, Mick, uh, what do you think of my 60 minute uh, Ironman match? I think it's great. And again, uh, as we uh, mentioned last week, <coughs> excuse me, we're putting people in their prime. And for me, the prime of Billy Robinson was probably in the middle 1970s, and the prime of Kurt Hennig was in his uh, Mr. Perfect days, uh, starting in the AWA, of course, uh, towards the end of his run here. But uh, that's that's one hell of a of an Iron Man match. I I cannot say anything but good things about that pick. I'm with you, and as you will see, I actually had those two in a matchup as well, but in a different match, but. Very good choice. All right, let's uh, let's go to the next one. I, we do have plenty of uh, pictures of Kurt Henning. We will get that. He, here's one that I found interesting: a brass knuckles last man standing match. I wanted two guys that I felt could really kick the crap out of each other, but they were a little bit different in terms of stature. But at the same time, I wanted to have one where I felt like there could be some serious damage done. And that is Mad Dog Vashon versus Bruiser slash King Kong Brody. I mean, I know the size differential, but I just feel like you put Mad Dog in a match like this, you give him a weapon like brass knuckles. To me, I just feel like that's right up his alley. Like he could get as nasty and mean as vicious with those and go toe for toe with uh, toe to toe with, uh, with Brody. I couldn't agree with you more uh, pound for pound. So many people have said that the dog, uh, one of the toughest of all time and Brody goes without saying, uh, I, it was interesting. I read somebody said on the internet the other day, mad dog Vashon was a horrible worker. 
And I'm thinking to myself, okay, but, but did he need to be anything but the mad dog that he was? His mm -hmm. career took off when he adopted the mad dog persona and, and left Maurice Fashan behind. Uh, him and Brody, that would tear the house down. Another great pick. No doubt. And the thing about the match, the first thing that strikes me, it reminds me, and I think I brought it up last week, about the match against Big John Stud. Uh, yes. Which, I mean, you know, even a, a, a more of a, of a difference in heights. I do believe Stud was taller than uh, Bruiser Brody. Um, but the thing that really stuck to me is Mad Dog wouldn't have needed the brass knucks. He had mm -hmm. his nails, he had his teeth, well, most of them anyway. Both um, of them. <laughs> I, yeah, and and I, I agree, that would have been a dog eat dog match. Yeah. Good call. Good call, Tubsy. All right. Well, I, I, my vacant AWA Women's Championship, this is one that we've heard before, but, but I feel like it goes without saying. Uh, two of the all-time greats. I'm going to go with another Vashon. You can see a little bit of a little bit of a pattern here. Vivian Vashon versus the fabulous, scary, sensational Sherry Martel. I, I mean, I, I think this. To me, I think there's a reason why this matchup was so popular. Here's what I would say to that: You ain't looking at divas there. You are attractive ladies, yes, but no nonsense. Uh, cat fight, alley fight, whatever you want to mm -hmm. call it, uh, one hell of a match, and uh, from from a different era, certainly in women's wrestling. But again, you nailed it. I'm telling you, pal. Uh, two uh, two of the very best of all time. Nicely done. Thank you. Yeah. Ah, look at her. There she is. <laughs> oh. God. I, 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 by the way, the scary Sherry fit her. Just because when Sherry got into character, mm -hmm. scary Sherry fit well. When she was out of character, love that woman. <laughs> she was a treat to be around. Um, great match. No, no doubt about it. Two fantastic workers would have been a would have been a main event match mm -hmm. on any card. Let me just add something here, Joe. Yeah. Uh, Sherry Martell was scary off camera too on occasion. Uh, lovely lady, but boy, I tell you what, if you got right. her in the wrong frame of mind, mm -hmm. uh, hit, hit, hit the bricks. Ooh, do tell. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. Let's, let's, let's There's do it. No, there is no doubt about what you said, Mick. Sherry could, would be as nice of a person off camera and in real life. But she did not put up with any shit, no. and she would let you know it. Damn right. Did, did any? Did either one of you? Two, let's do an episode on Sherry later. But <laughs> did either one of you two like feel the wrath of Sherry then? Like, or did yes. you? Did you witness? Oh, you did. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I never I, felt her wrath, but I certainly saw the wrath be dished out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. So See, they, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll do an episode on Sherry. I like that idea. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I just I feel like there's a lot of meat on that bone. Oh yeah. All right. Let's uh, let's get to my six man tag team match. I loved like the idea of the Sheiks. So naturally, I went with Adnan LKC, Jerry Blackwell, and Ken Patera. A little bit different on the other side, guys. Uh, I've got the Blackjacks. And I can't have a six-man match without having, as we've said here, maybe the best all-around performer in the history of the business. Not maybe, the, maybe. Not maybe. The best performer in the history of the business, Bobby the Brain Heenan. So I've got the Sheik's Army versus the Blackjacks and Bobby Heenan. Wow. Uh, excellent. Excellent. And again, you know, we've talked about who would the crowd cheer for that one. I got to believe they, mm -hmm. they would go with the Black Jacks and Bobby, uh, you know, against the foreign enemy. Uh, hopefully, Jerry would be in, in, in good shape and everybody would be in real good shape after uh, Adnan watched him getting his massage from the 1520 
Uh, Masusa <laughs> said Jerry would need it one time because he's got a big back, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, again, very good matchup. And can you imagine Bobby bumping his ass off in that one? Good God. I couldn't imagine him not bumping his ass off. Yeah. And not only, I mean, as Ray or as Nick Bockwinkel said, it was oftentimes better when he or Ray didn't show up yep. for yeah. a match and that Bobby would fill in for him. Nobody, nobody generated more heat during that era than Bobby Heenan. And I agree with what you said, Mick, how people would have cheered for the Blackjacks and Heenan uh, over uh, Adnan, Jerry, and, and Patera. Um, but make no mistake about it. Bobby was still the one who would have gotten the most heat. Fans would have cheered him and hated him at the exact same time. You got it. Yeah. All right. And and my main event kind of goes a little bit off the beaten path. I saw a couple of people that suggested this as well. And I love the idea of it because hypothetically, I, I think we you could have gotten a lot of mileage out of it, but but it never happened. I feel like a matchup between Greg Gagne and a heel Jim Brunzel for a vacant AWA title. Now you could have gone the high flyers, you know, disintegrated, but I was thinking about how you could set this up. And with as loved as Vern was and Greg being, you know, kind of the chosen one, the appointed one, I think you've got the perfect nepotism angle and jealousy angle from Jim that, if they would have done it, I feel like those two, you could put them in any kind of a match, cage match, Iron Man match, any sort of stipulation, and Greg Gagne versus Jim Brunzel. To me, I think that could have blown the doors off of any arena when they were at their best. I always wanted to see that. I think that would be a great matchup. I would add a caveat. Somehow or other, I would have Bobby Heenan in Jim Brunzel's corner. Uh, however they got there is, you know, conjecture. But uh, I think the match would be tremendous. There's uh, there's old Happy Greg, uh, old red, white, and blue, looking great. Um, Jim Brunzel with Bobby Heenan in his corner. And I would have to believe... I would have to believe that under normal circumstances, they would cheer for Greg Gagne. Mm -hmm. But I'm not 100% convinced on this one because Greg wrestled Ronnie Garvin towards the end of his career in Chicago for the international TV title. And uh, there's Jumpin' Jimmy looking, looking all casual and mm -hmm. happy. Uh, and Ronnie Garvin got the cheers to the point where Greg Gagne kind of insulted the Chicago crowd in his post-match promo. Uh, but I would love to see that match. It, it, to me, it was a natural, but never happened. You know, and since we're talking sort of dream matches, I'm going to do a little um, change on, on this one. Instead of Brunzi and Heenan, let's make Greg the heel, put Heenan with Greg, Ooh. put Brunzi as a baby face, and have Vern. Vern in his corner. In okay. Oh. Wow. Okay. Yeah, well, I could. I I could. We've seen Shane against Vince before, but mm -hmm. this would have been twenty plus years earlier. That would have been an interesting twist. I like that. I like okay. that. As a matter of fact, I'm changing my pick, and I'm taking credit for your idea, Joe. Yeah. I, I, well, I'm so we got to start this over because uh, I got to redo my card. So we're gonna stop this and. Start recording again, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Card subject to change. That's my booking, damn it. That's my there you go. Excellent, excellent, excellent. I, I, was so, uh, I was so proud of it till you just completely decided to shit on my idea and you made my idea better. No, no, no <laughs> shitting on it whatsoever. In all honesty, either way would have been fantastic. When yeah, I first yeah. saw that matchup, I'm like, Wow, you know what? I had never thought of yeah. that. So yeah, I I do I do like the idea with Vern in that's very in, good in, in Jim's corner. Hey, have you guys just real quick did um did Jim ever was that idea ever pitched to him as far as you know? Like the two of them, 
I mean, I, I know we'll probably have him on again, but do you know if that idea was ever kind of thrown out there? From what I understand, no. Uh, we, I, matter of fact, I talked to Jim about it, and he said, no, it would never happen because they – and this is what he said. He said they would boo Greg. <laughs> There's no way that Greg would want to go into the match as the heel. So, yeah, no, okay. it, it, it never happened. Well, and, and that's why I, I sort of came to my match yeah. idea of uh, putting Greg as the baby face. Greg was a fantastic worker. Yeah, sure Skinny was. as the rail, you know, and so that – but that led to his – believability but damn he could work and he absolutely could sell. well yep. we've got the aw english booking committee now i just realized That's that correct. That's now correct. i gotta find now i gotta find a way to go back to joe's card and figure out what suggestion i can make <laughs> <laughs> well, that time is coming soon <laughs> as a matter of fact you're up Joe's next up. what a segue what a segue <laughs> so let's start with the 60 minute iron man match and it was one that i'd alluded to earlier that it was a, a matchup that you had listed as well chris and that is nick bockwinkle with bobby heenan in his corner of course versus Vern Gagne with greg in his now yes i know nick and Vern had plenty of matches but seeing those matches both live and on tape so many different times in so many different situations. When I saw that 60 minute Iron Man, those were the first two that popped to mind. Two fantastic workers. Um, I don't think anybody would dismiss the fact that they could have both gone an hour with no problem. I threw in the wild card of Keenan and Nick's corner and Greg in Vern's corner. Mm -hmm. You got to have a little bit something else. So, yeah, seen before. You know, I, I, I didn't copy you, Chris. I didn't see what you were doing before. Um, and some may say that's an easy one. But, damn, those two had some great matches together. Two guys that could definitely work. Here's what I would say to that, Joe. I agree with you completely. And, again, we're talking about guys in their prime. Yeah. Uh, Nick, in 1986, was still going an hour with Kurt Hennig. I'm not sure that Vern in 1986 would have, you know, gone five minutes. Um, but Vern in his prime certainly uh, could have gone the 60 minutes. And there's uh, there's uh, Son and Pop. And, uh, yeah, Nick and Vern, one of my all-time favorite matches. And uh, good call. Iron Man match yeah. in their prime. Stellar. Yeah. Can't, can't argue with that one at all. Uh, the next match, the Brass Knuckles last man standing match. So you, the, the parameters were just the match. So I decided to make this a, a three-way dance. I went with Wahoo McDaniel versus The Crusher versus Mad Dog Vashon. Oh, wow. Three guys that could put more color onto the canvas than Monet. Um, <laughs> I like uh, that. I, li I like that. One. I like yeah. that. Yeah. I, I remember watching Wahoo and Superstar Billy Graham in the strap match. Uh, my very first main event as a small child was Crusher versus Mad Dog from the old St. Paul Auditorium in a steel cage. And as I have reiterated the story time and time again, after seeing that, how could you not be hooked? Yeah. Um, I was probably four or five years old at the time. Um, but you throw in Wahoo into that mix, and uh, Wahoo had some railroad tracks on his forehead. In fact, I remember him coming into the control room one time after a match in Las Vegas, so this was two days after, uh, and he didn't have his Band-Aid on his forehead. I'm going, Wahoo, you healed up yet? He goes, yeah, just went like this, boop. And blood just squirted out and started running oh. down its forehead. I mean, yeah, more railroad tracks than the r, &R Railroad on Monopoly. <laughs> well, there wow. he is. There yeah, he is. There, like, there's there Uncle is, Maurice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what a uh, taboot. 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 Love it. Um, so moving on, the uh, vacant AWA Women's Championship. And again, I went, I took the liberties and I went scary Sherry Martell versus Medusa. And I threw in another one, um, Tina Moretti. 
or Yonora's Ivory from the WWE. Mm-hmm. Um, and she also got her star with start with Glow. Yeah. Quite honestly, I think she was the only one that had any wrestling talent uh, to her. But I think three incredible workers in their prime. And I, I would have loved to have seen the match. I've seen Sherry and Medusa. I've seen Medusa against Tina Moretti. But let's put all three of them mm-hmm. together. Why not? Because we're having fun. Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 I was going to say... I was just going to say, I think it's interesting how, like, we've got these three-way, these triple threat matches, and, like, the way you're coming about them is interesting because, yeah, you, we've seen two of them, but we haven't seen the combination of, of three of them. And I I think that's just kind of an interesting twist kind of a, on how we had come up with the concept of this idea. A- absolutely. And, and to Joe's point about uh, Tina Moretti, Lisa Moretti is uh, her real name, uh, Outside of the ring, one of the nicest people you would ever want to meet. She is just a gem. Uh, like the match, Joe. Good call. Thank you. Uh, moving on, we've got other. Oh, oh. We, we don't move on yet, pal. No, no. It's Three, good. two, one. <laughs> <laughs> That's about all you would last, too. Anyway, um, the six man tag match. I'm going with. In an incre- I mean, quite possibly the most popular tag team in Japan, Bruiser Brody and Stan Hansen. I'm going to throw in another guy, Big John Stud versus okay. Mad Dog Vashon. And I think he's going to have a little help in his backup here, but two guys who I say changed professional wrestling in a similar way that Hulk Hogan did. And that tag team, the Road Warriors. Oh, man. And I put it this way. So I'm not, Animal and Hawk burst onto the scene, and they were something that I had never seen in professional wrestling. Two guys who just beat the living shit out of their opponents and they did it so convincing, convincingly. And I, I will say Hawk to me, one of the best people on the mic. He could cut a promo. Animal was no slouch, but damn Hawk did a fantastic job. Well, let's get those six men in there. And what do you think Mad Dog could do with the help of the Road Warriors? inside a steel cage woof woof i love it how, how could that not be a sellout yeah i mean I, immediately you got a sellout right there well you've got i i think just the you mentioned the the violence of the road warriors versus brody and hansen like those four guys could legitimately beat the shit out of each other yeah and then you add a John stud and a mad dog. And I think it kind of sounds like Joe, you're kind of along the same page as I am with mad dog saying you can put, you know, the small dog in the big fight and he's going to more than hold his own. You never want to mess with a Chihuahua. Remember that ladies and gentlemen, I want you to write that down. (laughs) Uh, Just one comment. You know, it's interesting the John stud choice. Um, I don't know if I'm in a, a minority here. I thought John Studd was okay. Um, I don't know that outside of his size, there was a lot exciting about John Studd. I think if you put him against the Mad Dog or somebody like that, um, nice guy outside the ring. But to me, when you talk about the big men in wrestling that are really great, I don't quite put Studd on that level. But nonetheless, I, I would say very good match. What, what, was what, was it was he better, uh, you know, as a big man versus a little man, or do you feel like wh- where was John Stud? Where do you feel he was best featured than Mick? I I think he was. I mean, he was featured the way he should be. He was a big guy. He was a big tough guy. He was a bruiser. He was no nonsense. He used the hard punch, uh, you know, as his finisher. And I, you know. It, a great attraction for his size. But when I think of the other big men in wrestling, like a Blackwell, like a mm-hmm. uh, big Van Vader, 
Bam Bam Bigelow. From an athletic standpoint, okay. John Studd is not there. I don't disagree with you, Mick. That's why I had him in a six-man, because Stud was not a fantastic worker. He was a large man with a devastating heart punch as a finisher, and throw him in with uh, Hanson and Brody. Um, I, I like the mix, but I don't there disagree. You go. No, no, absolutely. Yep. Good and call. Then, okay. The singles match for the vacant AWA Heavyweight Championship. And this is a one where, Chris, I have the same matchup as you did. You have him in the Iron Man match. I just put him in a singles match for the championship. Billy Robinson against Kurt Henning. Wow. I don't see how you could not want to see that match. And again, in their prime, Joe. Could it be? Um, could it- yeah, could could it could it be an Iron Man match for the championship? We can combine the two. You know why? Because we're booking it. That's right. That's right. That's Booking committee weird. there. I just added to yours. Well, uh, hold on, hold on. I think Wally Carbo is coming. He's going to be coming out here to, to any certain stipulations. Besides that, <laughs> where's where's Wally? Where's Wally? Wally had the to see what happens. Let him go. <laughs> the way I look at it. Yeah, there might be fines and suspensions after well, that. Of course there will be. And you're the first guy to get fined, Chupik. You got all the money. <laughs> <laughs> I got all the money. You didn't get paid from Vern. Boom. Uh, <laughs> I like it. I like it a lot. And uh, there he is. Boy, I tell you what. Um, 1990s, late 1980s. None better. I oh, agree. Man, at right now. What? Do yourself a favor. Look at some of Kurt's old matches. And if you can watch one of his matches and not believe that professional wrestling is real, then, then go watch a different soap opera. But damn, Kurt could bump. He could do shit inside that ring that I was just in awe of. As and same with Billy Robinson as well. But different times, different eras in their primes. I'm going with Kurt to go over. Yeah. All right. Excellent matchup. And and I think Kurt's one of those guys that even in today's wrestling industry, he would fit. Like, he would fit the smaller athletic, you know, just, you know, what you see a lot on the indies or what you see on TV like. He wouldn't be one of these guys that would have to change and evolve. Like he was there 30 plus years ago. Yeah, absolutely. What one of the all time greats. You, yeah. you can't have a top 10, top five, top three without mentioning Kurt Hennig. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Um, well, I, I I know that I was supposed to like do some introduction. I kind of I like where you guys are like introducing because you're kind of like coming up with kind of the reason why. So I let Joe introduce his. So, Mick, you just want to introduce yours? Sure. I, okay. I can do that. Uh, let me just move over to the screen here. Okay. We're going to start with the 60 minute Iron Man match. And uh, once again, a name that has been mentioned many times on our show uh, Billy Robinson, the great Billy Robinson. For some reason, Billy always fits into this type of a match. We're going to put Billy Robinson over here, AWA fans. You didn't last week. We're going we're gonna to put him over. Um, the opponent that I would pick for him was not in the AWA for a long time uh, for, in, in terms of duration. There's, there's Billy Robinson, uh, old, old stretcher Billy. Um, the guy that I would put him against in the Iron Man match, and this makes total sense to me, was one of the greatest – Workers, one of the greatest shooters in the history of wrestling, and that would be the late, great Danny Hodge. Uh, Danny, NWA, junior heavyweight champion, his time in the AWA, he teamed up uh, or he came in and wrestled uh, Eddie Sharkey on occasion for the light heavyweight championship. Uh, Danny was legitimately one of the strongest guys ever in the history of wrestling. Man could take, you know, we've seen him do it. Take an apple in one hand, squeeze the juice right out of it, break players uh, with one hand. Uh, great collegiate wrestler. Uh, first wrestler to appear on the cover of Sports Illustrated. 
Uh, so I would say the 60-man Ironman match would be Billy Robinson against uh, Danny Hodge. W- what a match they must be having upstairs right now. Uh, that, that's all I can say to that one. Um, all right, moving on. Uh, brass Knuckles last Hey, Mick, hey, Mick, oh, Mick yeah. I, found you, I, I found your cat. She's in the shades. Well, nice of you to show up. You were you all uh, you were looking for your cat. Me, you're like, oh, I hope I I I just found your cat for you. Well, I, I, I appreciate that very much. I uh, that, that's my fan club over here <laughs> watching from the from the peanut gallery. Uh, uh, continuing on, <laughs> God. she just uh, she did the run in. She did. The run-in. <laughs> it's a schmoz. She 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 did the she did the schmoz. Boy, talk about a cat fight. But at any rate, uh, let's go to a the the last man standing match, the uh, brass knuckles, I and I do. decided also to go to a uh, a three way dance in this one, and uh, I I don't know if you could get much tougher than this. Let's take a look at uh, number one contender would be Big Jerry Blackwell, uh, brass knuckles last man standing match. It has to be. You got to put Jerry in there. Otherwise, it doesn't make any sense whatsoever. There's the big man from Stone Mountain, Georgia. The man with the uh, with the large back, Ayatollah Jerry. And uh, Jerry, one of the toughest guys, one of the best big men in the history of wrestling. I have two opponents for Jerry in this matchup that just might be able to handle themselves in a, uh, a, six, in a brass knuckles last man standing match. One of them would be, and yes, he appeared in the AWA as late as the mid-1980s when he was with the Pro Wrestling USA promotion. Also, when he got started in the business, yeah, he was in the AWA. And I'm talking about the legendary Terry Funk. And, uh, you know, you put Terry in a last man standing match. uh, Again, you know, it's very appropriate. You don't have a square peg in a round hole for that match. Uh, Terry Funk, one of my all-time favorites, a legitimate tough guy. Uh, Terry, one of the most beloved figures in professional wrestling. He's had some some health issues over the past couple of years, but uh, got to put Terry in that match. And then the third guy, arguably the toughest guy in pro wrestling ever. Uh, that's what I've heard many, many times, and that is uh, Haku. In the AWA, of course, he was King Tonga. So things would be a little bit, uh, you know, name change, whatever you want to call him. Just don't call him late to the dinner table. I, I'm telling you, Tonga, Terry Funk, and Jerry Blackwell, brass knuckles, last man standing match. Feedback. Wow. Somebody's going to die. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it is literally a last man standing match. I mean, you... you I mean, you, you think, and like all of them, especially Terry, you just believe like this craziness. Like it's not a gimmick. You, you really believe like there's something wrong mentally that they will take themselves to a place where they will literally try and kill one another. Yeah. I think that's, I, and, and yeah, I mean, the stories about Haku, I mean, they're, they're legendary. They're legendary. Oh, yeah, the Haku will bite a guy's nose off, pull a guy's eye out. I mean, those are legitimate stories. Jerry, we know how tough he was. And I, I told you, Terry Funk, when he wrestled Road Warrior Hawk in Minneapolis, the chairs were flying and Terry was just out of control. And he said to me, had you not gotten out of the way, I would have hit you with the chair. And I know he meant it. So, uh, yeah, Terry Funk, very, very believable. Uh, so, yeah, that would be my uh, my choice there. I will, I will, before you get on to your next one, Mick, yeah. I, will, I will say that I could make a case that that could be my favorite match so far. That would have been as brutal a match as anybody would have ever oh. seen. Brutal in terms of the the uh, chair shots, the, the brass knuckles being thrown in the mix. I'm guessing maybe a ring post or two would have been introduced to a couple of guys. Yeah. That match, wow, wow. That canvas would have been red in Mm -hmm. minutes. Yeah, no question about it. Uh, Moving on to the vacant 
uh, AWA Ladies Championship. And again, these are fantasy cards, ladies and gentlemen. Doesn't, you know, no, no right or wrong. So I came up with one that would be <coughs> designated as kind of a family feud. Uh, we've had uh, Cody and Dustin working against each other. We've had Brett and Owen Hart working against each other. Uh, for the ladies' match, I would put together the Vashon aunt and niece. Uh, I would go with Vivian Vashon, uh, again, one of the toughest lady wrestlers of all time, and uh, the, the sister of Mad Dog and Butcher Vashon. There's Viv in all her glory, and what a tough, tough woman she was. Vashon through and through. And speaking of Vashon through and through, I would put her in the ring with her niece. And then the, the cat just did some kind of a leap off the top rope here. Oh, my God. Talk about last man standing. Get out of here. All right. <laughs> Wally, Wally, Wally's Wally got to kick the cat out of the mat. Get out of here. Get out of here. All right, uh, I would put <laughs> Vivian Vachon in the ring with her niece. Well, there's Viv again. Oh, that, 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 that's Viv. Do we have the? Uh, do we have? Yeah, the, I've, yeah, I've got it. Hold on, I got it. You know, I don't mind two pictures of Vivian. Believe me. Yeah, uh, I, you know, I think I mislabeled that one for you, Chris. My apology. No, oh. I've got no, I've got Luna here. I've got the I've got the new one. Uh, hold on, I get it. Well, I just well, got. I do, I'll, I'll talk about it anyway. While we're, I think while I we're, I think you sent me that one, so I figured I had to use it. Okay, well, close enough. People know who what Luna Vachon looks like. Uh, so Vivian Vachon and Luna Vachon, of the two of them, uh, there's Luna in all her beauty. How'd you like mm -hmm. to take her to the high school prom? Mm -hmm. uh, the late Luna Vachon, uh, of the two of them. Luna was the nutcase. I mean, in the ring, she was absolutely just out of control. Vivian Vachon was tough, no nonsense, straight ahead, uh, played to the crowd a lot, loved interacting with the fans and giving them a little shit uh, in the first couple of rows at ringside. But I just can just imagine somehow you set up the angle with Vivian Vachon and her niece, Luna Vachon, both in their prime. I'm going to add something to that match since we're doing the fantasy booking. How about if we make it a true family affair and we put Butcher in Vivian's corner and Mad Dog in Luna's? Very good. Very good. Oh, I like that. See, look at look at you, Joe. I mean, this is I'm Joe's pretty good at this. You know, the thing is he he thinks that he gets paid extra if he comes up with a good idea. Yeah. Um so that rude awakening will be coming. Hey, very I'm just thankful that I get paid the same that you got paid from Vern, Mick. You're thankful about that? Well, <laughs> hell of a life you've had, pal. Yeah, I, I, I feel like I'm the one that made the most money working for Vern between the three of us. You did. You did. You didn't make a dime and you still made more than we did. Hey, I will have to say Vern took care of me. Well, I, yeah, he, he sure did. But All anyway, right. yeah. um, moving on. My six-man tag team <laughs> cage match. Uh, again, we're kind of uh, going on the uh, on the angle of a Ganya Brunzel feud, and I put together Harley Race, Jim Brunzel, and Kurt Hennig, all the heels against Greg Ganya, Vern Ganya, and the crusher and i would put crusher in there in his baby face prime uh but six of the all-time greats there's crush well that's i i think right there joey crusher was actually looking at one of your pay stubs when he <laughs> when they took that picture so I, I i believe that Vern took care of you actually i think that th that was his reaction when his girlfriend Wanda lost weight and got down to 250 and he had to find oh. a new girlfriend because Wanda became too skinny. Crusher was devastated when she, yeah, when she hit that 250 mark, it was like she was emaciated. Yeah. Terrible. He, he tried to feed her some kielbasa and some beer, but no, no. She was terrible. Get down to 249. There, there, there's, there's Greg and Vern uh, for purposes of... <laughs> Oh boy, you! Uh, 
I've been hit over the head with bar rags, bar stools, bar mates. You I know, call them bitches. We're gonna go down to Lake Minnetinki. I'm gonna. What the hell was I saying? Can you put, put up some of the pictures so I remember what the hell I was talking about here, Doug? Will you? I Hang just, on a minute. And now I got the cat. The cat is trying to get it. Oh God, what a cat's trying to get in my lap now. <laughs> Oh, my uh, God, this thing is completely gone off oh the rails. Oh, my God, we have gone completely off the rails. Look at there goes the cat again. I, <laughs> <laughs> there, dear Brunzel. The cat, you know what? The cat is booking her own show here. <laughs> oh, my God. Wow, nice <laughs> she just She just said to me, how come I didn't have Cat LaRue in that uh, ladies match? <laughs> oh, well, look at that. Look at the cat hanging out there. <laughs> <laughs> she's, trying to get, she's trying to get away with it the ref can't see her oh my god she's hiding under she's hiding under the ring the ref can't see her oh my god the highlight the highlight all right let's uh so anyway that was a great six-man tag so whatever the hell i was talking about real quick on that one and i don't want to like like copy what i did with the last one but what i couldn't help but oh. think with harley jim and kurt yeah that's what it was that that you that you mix in somehow Larry, I mean, Larry Absolutely. and Harley, fantastic tag team. Kurt and Larry, father and son. Who would we mix in? So you, if, if you put Larry in that corner, who could you throw in for a fourth for Greg, Vern, and Crusher? Wow. I don't know. Maybe Vern's wife, <clears throat> Mary? <laughs> I Possibly. I don't know. Maybe Pat, the, the, uh, the office secretary? <laughs> what do you think, <laughs> Al Darusha? I don't know. Could be it's certainly, certainly not going to be Stan Kowalski. Stan would have never agreed to that. But oh, uh, no. anyway, moving <laughs> moving right along, I uh, into um, my main event, and again, th this one of course is going to go way back because I, I and I'm putting together my two favorite wrestlers of all time. So that's that's basically how I put this one together. One of them, of course, is Nick Bockwinkle. Uh, you know, everybody was you know, sending me messages over the past week saying, I'm sure you're going to put Nick in a match, you know, somewhere on your card. Of course I am. Uh, Nick would uh, get into the ring. There's Nick and Bobby, a classic, classic picture. One of that's my good. favorite uh, of the two of them, just a great, great shot in their prime. The man that I would oppose, Nick Bockwinkle, and I would leave Nick as a heel. So you would probably have a heel versus heel match, although I would say Nick would be cheered because he would be going against that man. Uh, that is Mr. M, the mysterious Mr. M, the late Dr. Bill Miller. He is a former AWA World Heavyweight Champion. And I would say, uh, again, if the stipulation about Mr. M were the same as it was when he was champion, it would be that any man that can defeat him takes the mask off. Mm -hmm. And for that reason, I think that Nick would absolutely be the crowd favorite. Uh, Bill Miller... Uh, in his later years, kind of slowed down a little bit, uh, you know, ring style, got a little more plotting and methodical. But the, the mystery of Bill Miller and Mr. M back in the day really meant something. It, you know, it wasn't when masked men were a dime a dozen. And there was always the intrigue. Who is going to finally take the mask yeah. off of Bill Miller? And uh, to me, in my mind, because they are my two favorite wrestlers, that would be my ultimate fantasy match. Two questions for you, Mick. So was Mr. M the first over masked wrestler in the AWA? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely he was. And, you know, he had appeared in Omaha as Dr. X uh, before, you know, Dick Beyer made his appearance under that name in the AWA. Uh, yeah, Bill came to the AWA. He had been here before. But he came in uh, with a mask in 1961 and defeated Vern for the title in 62 and then also lost the title uh, back to Vern in 1962. And, and I have mentioned before, uh, when he's walking back from the locker room, he gets hit over the head uh, by a uh, fan with a two-by-six plank with a steel spike at the end of it. And, uh, yeah, wow. what a way to go out. But that would be my 
my dream match, two of my, my absolute all-time favorite wrestlers. So then my second question, I remember it would have been mid-70s when the Super Destroyer Mark One, Two, and Three, when they all came along, managed yeah. by Lord L. Finkel Hayes. Yeah. Um, the, the the whole stipulation of if you beat him, then you could take his mask off. Um, so I mean, wrestling is cyclical. We all know that. But um, do you recall? I mean, were other territories? doing that as well with their masked wrestlers? Some of them did, but, you know, it's interesting, Joe, that you mentioned the Super Destroyers, uh, one, two, and three, and there was never that stipulation. When they came in, they did not have that stipulation about the mask. They were just big, tough mask guys uh, managed by Bobby Heenan, Lord Alfred Hayes, whoever, you know, at the time, but they didn't have the same, the same impact in terms of if we lose – we're going to take the mask yeah. off. Dr. X did uh, in the 1960s and 70s and wound up taking his own mask off uh, to get into the ring with Black Jack Lanza and Bobby Heenan in the fall of 1970. But uh, prior to that, Bill Miller was was the only guy who had that stipulation. Cool. And it, it, it is so interesting because masks now, like you can Google anything and you can find out what somebody looks like without their mask. Absolutely. Back then, it was such a big deal. Who is this person? Do we know them? Is it, is it somebody that I would recognize? And there was such a mystique about that mask and it meant something, you know, not, you know, it's part of the lucha and the, you know, that style. But in terms of just the, you know, masked wrestler being a masked wrestler, it it was so much bigger than it is now. It it really was, and they they kept it very close to the vest. As a matter of fact, uh, the Star Tribune actually did an interview with Mister M. Uh, this is towards the end of his run, and he goes on to say in this interview, a lot of people have specula speculated that I'm this mm -hmm. guy and that guy, and Bill Miller. He says, and some guy named Bill Miller, and he denied everything. Uh, Bill Miller, of course, uh, you know, for fans who are not familiar, great collegiate wrestler, big man, about 300 pounds out of Columbus, Ohio. He was a veterinarian by trade. He and Vern had wrestled in the Big Ten uh, on occasion and uh, the real deal, uh, Bill Miller. You know, I'll say along those lines, Mick, I do miss kayfabe. I miss the time before the internet where things are leaked, where you find out information before. It's like opening your Christmas present on Halloween. Just let it play out. Yes. I mean, yeah. the, the, the spoilers, they don't really spoil it, but I will say that they, it's like adding too much seasoning to your taco meat. I mean, it's just, you know, just let it be. Enjoy, enjoy it. Yes. I, I enjoy it as a fan. Because part of it, it's like you, you don't want to find out how a movie ends before you're going to go watch it. Exactly. Um, problem, you know, the problem in not taking shots at the modern day wrestling fan, really. Uh, but the internet smarks, you know, they they've got to be in on the they got to be in on the action. They got to be in yeah. on the joke. And because of that, uh, as far as what you said, Joe, about kayfabe, train left the station, buddy. A never coming back. Yeah. Probably will only get worse. Uh, yep. Sadly. Oh, yep. well. All right. Got a, a few minutes left here, guys, before we're going to go ahead and uh, bring it home. Let's uh, go ahead and go with our shout outs. Uh, Joe, why don't you go ahead and go first? My shout out this week is to somebody who I uh, actually I work with um, on a production crews. Uh, Ken Trainer, a big time old AWA fan and wrestling fan. Ken. Keep watching. Keep listening. We'll see you on the next shoot, which actually will be tomorrow afternoon. My shout out goes to a great wrestling fan, uh, Donna Peterson. Uh, my friend Donna Peterson, I'm telling you, I have, uh, you know, lunch with her and her husband, Glenn. And I'm telling you, Donna jumps into that wrestling conversation, talking about the old days in the AWA, the Crusher and Mad Dog, et cetera, et cetera. Great wrestling fan. Loves the podcast, and her husband is is a kick. Uh, so, Donna, salute. Um, before you get into yours, Chris, could I, I – hey, 
hate to do two shout outs, but I think in this episode it's deserved. I think we got to give another shout out to Mix Cat. Where'd it go? Ah! There she there is. is. She's still right hiding there. under the ring. Right, right, right over there. You know, I, I don't know if the cat, you know, thinks that she's incognito there uh, or not. Uh, in a moment, you know, it, when I watch this podcast, uh, she will then be officially incognito. I, I promise you. When I look at it back and realize the damage that was done, although the cat will probably take my spot here uh, next week. Speaking of next week, she oh, would do, she she would do a shout out. Good job. Oh yeah, mine uh, mine goes to uh, a friend of ours, uh, Jason Biaggi, who's ah. uh, who I, I'm. Not sure if he got a, a shout out before. Maybe he did, but uh, uh, Matt's cat. I meant mixed cat. You know what I mean. Just pretend you're. I'm gonna call you Matt from now on, just because I screwed it up. <laughs> go Matt, go out to Matt's cat. All right. Uh, yeah, but uh, Jason. Jason's a, a big, uh, a big fan. All right. A uh, couple minutes left. Uh, we got some fun things on tap, but uh, tell us what's coming up next week, Matt. Well. <laughs> Oh, there goes the cat. There goes the cat. The cat was so offended that I called you Matt. You know something? I, you know, the, the cat's going to be asking for royalties now. <laughs> you realize that? Um, well, I, I appreciate you uh, letting me uh, kind of tease the next week's uh, guest, uh, Ted, uh, as it were. Uh, I have the pleasure, and we have the pleasure, of interviewing one of the great lady wrestlers of all time. And I'm talking about Princess Victoria, Vicky Otis. And uh, Vicky had to, had, unfortunately, had to retire due to injury uh, earlier than she should have. Great wrestler, wrestled all over the world, not only the stars of the AWA, but she resides up in the Pacific Northwest. So she got an opportunity to work alongside Kurt Hennig and Colonel De Beers. And, and you know, that ilk and playboy buddy rose vicky is very outspoken and uh she does not pull any punches she's going to be a great guest love I'm uh, looking forward uh, to yeah that yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna love you know hearing the stories that she's gonna tell and especially the way that you had set this up mix so uh thank you guys for that and uh i said that uh before we went i was going to share the picture of my friend uh, Jason Strife, I was able to find it, uh -huh. and there he is, the uh, bulletproof tiger. Uh, Nathan, rest in peace, brother. Uh, I love you. I uh, miss you. And uh, till then, 